my name is Michael. Uh, I work for Movable Inc. We uh, are building an email marketing platform using Ember. We're hiring. Come join us. Uh, so today I want to talk to you. Well, first I want to show you. Um, this is a project called CrossFilter. It was built by Mike Bostock, the author of D3. Uh, it's a really cool project. What it's actually doing is it's pulling down millions of data points in a CSV into the browser, and you can actually filter them in real time. Uh, and cut different dimensions, it's pretty neat. Uh, the only uh, downside of this is that this browser tab right here is using 500 megs of memory. Uh, so if your laptop doesn't have a lot of memory, it's probably not gonna work. Um, and also when you load the page, uh, there is a pause as the entire browser is trying to uh, filter and uh, sort all of these elements when it starts. So that, that's kind of the, the backstory of what I'm gonna talk about. But first I wanna talk about a little bit more a simpler example. Uh, most of you probably know uh, what Fibonacci is. It's a sequence um, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. Uh, every number is the sum of the two previous numbers. Uh, if you had a first uh, programming interview question, it might have included this. So, so this app right here uh, just takes, it asks for a se uh, sequence number and then will tell you the Fibonacci number at that value. So this is the code right here. Um, it's extremely simple. Um, here's our application controller. Uh, we're just binding this uh, input to sequence number, and then we're gonna compute the value, and then uh, just spit it back out in the uh, result. So uh, we import our Fibonacci from lib uh, Fibonacci, and then we call Fibonacci.fib. So here, uh, Here is our fib. Uh, you can implement Fibonacci two different ways, uh, or at least two ways. Uh, one is recursive, the other is iterative. I chose recursive, it's a little bit easier. Uh, here are the first two base cases, zero and one, and then we call fib a minus one plus fib a minus two. Pretty simple, right? So then you've got this here, and you can hit up, and you can see that it's calculating the Fibonacci number. But wait a second, uh, this is not JavaScript. Um, this is actually C++. So uh, we have injected some C++ into our app and actually imported it via ES6 requires. So. <laughs> so, so how do you do this? Uh, <laughs> you, pro you probably shouldn't, uh, but, but if you did, uh, how would you do it? Um, so there's this pretty cool project called uh, called mscripten. Uh, mscripten is actually going to take C or C++ code, convert it into LLVM bytecode, uh, and then eventually convert that into JavaScript uh, using a very cool project called asm.js. ASM uh, is actually, it's fully valid JavaScript. Uh, it's a subset of JavaScript that is uh, a little bit easier for the browser to understand. Uh, this actually ties in nicely what, with what Steph was talking about yesterday. Uh, if only we uh, kind of restrict what we're doing in the browser, um, it's actually much easier to, uh, to kind of compile that into faster code. So, so it's actually JavaScript, but it would look more like bytecode to you. Uh, and so why, assuming that we did want to do this, why would we do it? Uh, things like algorithms, play this. Uh, things like algorithms uh, could be good. Um, you can, uh, people have written all kinds of things in C++ or C and then converted them uh, into JavaScript. Somebody ported Doom into the browser, uh, just a straight port. Um, so uh, there's, it's not quite ready, it'd probably never be ready, but uh, the, it's not quite ready for use yet. One of the things is that it's actually, uh, loading a 400K uh, mscript in runtime for every single file that you do. So this is actually implemented as an Ember CLI add-on. So it actually, uh, so it's actually part of the compile chain. So you just drop a, uh, so I just dropped this Fibonacci.cpp in lib. It picked it up, it automatically figured out that I can require it like this. Mscripten includes this nice Mscripten bindings where I say 
my fib function, we're going to export that as fib. I wrapped that in the ES6 binding so that it can pick it up and then you can call it the C++ function straight from Ember. And if uh, you're absolutely crazy and want to try it out, you can npm install it right here. Thanks.